dear friends, thank you so much for joining me today. I've been asked by a few people to show you how I use gouache in adult coloring books. I am not an expert. I'm fairly new to gouache. I love coloring with watercolors, but I must admit not so much in coloring books. I prefer painting with watercolors on proper watercolor paper. But I've recently started trying out gouache and found that it is quite useful in adult coloring books because it is different to watercolors. You get gouache in things like little yogurt cups. Um, they sell something called Himi gouache, H-I-M-I. -I. I've seen a number of people use those. I don't have that. I have some tubes of gouache. Um, it's available in various price points and I have a very inexpensive set that comes in tubes and it seems to work absolutely fine. Reeves gouache, it's very inexpensive I think, much like any of the other art brands that are there. And then I have a few other sets, not sets, other just loose tubes. I've got a large tube of Dala, D-A-L-A, Dala, Dala White. And I would suggest that if you decide to use gouache that you get a large tube of white because it's, you use it a lot. And then I've got six of this Dela Rowney, which is a British. The Dela or Dala is a South African brand. This is, I think, a British brand. Um, that's quite nice. And I have one or two Windsor and Newton gouaches. But what I'm going to do, I tried out the page that I'm going to do. I photocopied it and I tried it out on just a piece of cardstock. I decided to do this page because where things like gouache and watercolour come in handy are when they're these large open areas. So I, I decided I will show you how I did the trees and the snow. So here is the completed image that I did and I've done um, some washi tape around it just to show you what it looks like the way I've done it in case you'd like to try. I did the fence with just with markers and some little fine liners on the birds and the tree branches. And then I outlined the top to go over the dark lines. I find that the I don't know, it's going to be interesting to see in the paper that's in the colouring book whether the gouache covers it, but I found that the toner, I've got something on there, that the toner on the black marks, the gouache just peels off it as if it was oil or something. So I'll be interested to see what happens. So that's what the completed image looks like. I'm not going to do this whole page now online because that would take too long. I'm just going to show you bits and bits. So to start with, uh, you will need two vessels of water, one to rinse your paper, um, not your paper, <laughs> excuse me, one to rinse your brush and one of clean water or just for the white, which is what I'm, I've been using it for. And then I've got three brushes, a flat one. This is a flat size six that I'm using. It's called a flat shader. And then a size six round and a small round, which is about a zero or a two. I'm not sure because these are so old and tatty that the numbers have worn off them. Then white gouache. Some, we're going to start with the snow. So some, I've put those away. I used ultramarine and white and then a tiny little bit of black, maybe. And I'll tell you if I use anything else. And I'm taking the grey out in case I decide I want it. And then one would need a palette of any sort. You can use a saucer or 
anything like that. The gouache doesn't really re-wet all that well. It works better as a wet thing, like from the tube. Um, I am not sure if I'm going to remove this page now. I'll try doing it in the book because I don't really like taking my pages out of the books. And then I'm going to put a page beneath it. And then one doesn't really need to tape it down like you do with watercolors because you're not going to use that much water. But I'm going to put some washi tape around so that I can see where my edges are and then I'll remove the washi tape afterwards. All right, now to start with, we're going to start on the sky. I always have a piece of kitchen towel for my hand to rest on and I also have another piece to dry my brush or wipe my brush. And for the sky, we're going to use the ultramarine blue. And I have a tiny bit of white left there, so I'm just going to mix it in with that to save myself another, another place in this palette. And one doesn't use a lot of water. I'm going to be using this round brush because it's easier to mix and easier to sort of move than the flat one. And I'm just going to, I'm dipping my paintbrush into the water again and just mixing that and put dipping the paintbrush in one more time and mixing that in. And then, so it's a fairly sticky, I would say it's like pouring cream. And then I'm wiping it down on the edge so that I can get a bit of a point to my brush. And then I'm going to simply color this in and that's why I wanted the edges covered. Now you see, when you watch the gouache paintings on YouTube, all the ones I watch, they're busy doing a clean piece of paper, so they're not trying to fit things into these fiddly places. <laughs> so when I do the trees, then I do a little bit of freehand as well. And this comes out not as smoothly as perhaps one would like but by adding little dots for skies and things like for the sky and things like that it helps to even it out going over that again which is also helping to even it out the gouache is re-wettable so each time you add water to it it re-wets again Now I'm dipping my brush into the water again. I'm not swishing it around. I'm just actually dipping it and wiping it off on the edge. So I've thinned the paint out perhaps a little bit more because it was just a little bit too sticky. Gouache is an opaque medium. So what is nice about that in colouring is when you paint with watercolour, you get white by preserving the white of the paper and watercolour is translucent. And so that white needs to shine through to the white of the paper needs to shine through or you need to put um, artist glue or I can't remember the name of the stuff now. I can never remember when I'm doing something else. My brain goes to 
not able to multitask, <laughs> sorry, an age problem. Um, but gouache you can layer white on top of. Now you can see I've gone into the green, the area where the tree is that I want to be green, but I will just layer on top of that with the green so it's not bothering me unduly. Now my brush has got quite dry, I don't know if you can see that. So I'm trying to just go into the paint without dipping it in water again. And this is where it's easier on the coloring book page than watercolor is. Gouache was first developed way back for designers before the days of digital photography when they wanted to get a very matte finish to be able to photograph and show ad advertising photographs and things like that. And gouache was developed for that so it comes out as a very flat, very matte end product and it feels a little bit to the finger like when your kids have been painting with poster paint to me it feels like that again my brush is dry so i'm going to speed this well let me just do another little bit and then i'll actually switch off and complete this and then get to the snow i could just leave it like this and start with the snow but that really messes with my OCD. So I've merrily gone over the top of that, which I can either just leave or fill in in a kind of a freehand way. So if you're very particular about not going over lines and things, you may want to do something like this with a very fine brush. I kind of want to get done so that I can show you the next bit. It's a problem with doing videos. While I'm doing this, I wanted to show you, I'm going to zoom in on a place here. I don't know if you can see this area. Sometimes the paint is quite thick and what I do then is I take my brush into the water, rinse it out a bit, dry it off a little bit and then just spread that with the water so that you smooth it out. And then you're seeing some white come through and then we'll just do another layer. I hope that explains that for you. Now for the snow, we're going to do it in different layers. As it's further away, it's going to be almost uh, purple, like a bluish. And then I outlined that with Posca and I'll see what I do with this one. Um, so I've got this ultramarine blue that's still in here. And I'm going to just add a little bit more. And then I'm going to put a little bit of white in my white section. I'm going to put a little bit of white there, actually, because I want quite a lot. And I'm putting some more there. And we'll move onwards from there. So once again, I'm dipping my brush in the water and then I'm going to mix this white in with the blue to make a sort of a purple, a light blue. You can see that's very thick. So you can paint with it thick like that but that's actually too thick for my liking. The trouble is it all sticks in your brush. 
Um, I'm going to add a bit more water to that and I want to add some more white. So I think I'm going to add a bit more white from the tube rather than from the little bit that's next door here. Making quite a lot of paint. As you can see, one really goes through the white paint. I don't know if one could perhaps, if you are used to painting with gouache, I don't know if one could mix this with a toothpick or something maybe. because it's so, it's like one's wasting such a lot of it in the bristles of this brush. <laughs> the gloopy mess. I've seen um, people using flat palettes and I think that might actually be the answer here. I'm going to have to do some kind of a painting to use up all that's left here. So, before I clean my brush, I'm going to try and use some of this in these distant mountains. So I hope you can see, I'm still using my size 6 brush, but I actually think the size 2 would be better. I just want to use up some of this paint. Trouble with paint is it's expensive. Let me do this larger area where I can actually put some down. I'm going right over the black line because it kind of shines through. Now I'm going to get my little size 2 brush that I had here. I'm wetting that and I'm going to try. I want to show you what I'm doing. Try and take some of this paint off this brush to use so that I don't waste it all. Oh, I hope that's not dirty underneath now. Get a cleaner line. One could use a very small detail brush for this. But if you struggle with sore hands, which I sometimes do, and I know many colorists do, then painting is much less strain on the hand than colour pencil, for instance. It's, um, you're still using this pincher-like movement to hold the brush, but it's not, there's no pressure or anything. One hardly touches. And the thing with this being gouache, if I feel once I've done this that I want this lighter, I could actually do a thin, slightly watered down layer of white on top and it will lighten it. So, because this is supposed to be distant snow and I think it's maybe too purpley. I'm not quite sure what these long tall things are. I thought maybe they're grain silos or something like that. This of course is a scene completely unknown to me in my life of snow on trees etc. It's not something I've ever ever experienced. might seem strange for you guys that live in cold countries, especially 
Canadians. <laughs> I have a few friends that are Canadians. And those of you in cooler areas in America and the UK and Europe. I'm going to make this mountain here. Um, then I think this, I think I went over what is mountain there. So I'm painting that in. And then this little bit. And you can see that the dark blue has more or less smoothed out as it's dried. So with the help of some white stars, etc., it will make it look fine. And now I'm going to, going to just actually create another little area here. Pick up some of this. And now I'll have to clean this brush. It's quite a mess. It's all the paint is stuck in it. I always wipe it on another cloth and you can see there's still some blue coming off it. You know, it's not clean. One does need to clean your brushes unless you have the finance to continuously buy yourself new things. So I think that's clean now. I'm going to just dry it on here and see. And I'm going to just pick up a little bit of white from that and mix that in here. So this will be paler. And a little bit of water. and get it towards the end of the brush. And then I'm painting the next layer of mountains. And now I'm doing a bit of a fast forward just to show you what this looks like because it's fairly repetitive and I don't want the video to take up an entire day and night. <laughs> I had thought I'd get to do some snow and a trees but I think I'm just going to get the snow in this video and then if you like this and if you'd like me to show you how I do the trees, please let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video of the trees. But if I don't get any comments, then I won't do one of the trees. I'll just do something else for my next video. I continuously add white and make each layer a little paler than the one before. And I will continue offline. So now I finished a couple of rows, one I added a little bit of grey to and then the night came and I paused overnight so this is dried out and now I've added some water to a pipette which I'm just popping on top of the dried out gouache and I'm going to add a bit of white wet gouache into that and mix it up and reactivate this gouache that's dried out um, with the water and then continue with a few more layers, which I will speed up as well and show you. You can see that the mixing is quite a process. Um, you've got to, well, not really a process, you've just got to do it. I, the wash when it comes out of the tube makes me think of toothpaste. It's kind of like jelly-like toothpaste kind of thing and you've got to mix it up until it's creamy. Um, so 
I wanted to show that to you because the first time I used gouache, I didn't actually know what to do. I took it out of the tube and then I tried to use it from that. And I'm not sure if the hemi gouache that comes in the yogurt cups also needs to be thinned a little bit or if one uses it just like that. I would like to try some one day, but what I have heard from people also regarding the hemi gouache is that it dries out and then you've got this whole yogurt cup full of dried out gouache that you can't really use because it doesn't work well like watercolor does in a cake a cake consistency that you just wet and use you need much more of this actual paint so i'm also worried about doing that so i'll wait and see i've now made this quite a lot more pale and i'm going over the gray as well because you can see on the previous bits that I had used some gray to try and create some shadows then I'm not so sure about them so you'll see I go over them with the pale bluey whitey gouache as well later on to see and I just generally it's always what I do when I paint I just keep going until I get what I actually like so I wanted you to be able to see the consistency again it's very much like pouring cream just thickish cream or thickish pouring yogurt that sort of creamy consistency and the page really doesn't buckle as much as it does with watercolor I had a hair that had fallen over there I'm going over these black lines a bit as well that are in the coloring book uh, because the gouache is opaque and it just goes over them. I bought myself a new little detail brush. So I bought a little set, which you'll actually see in my mini haul video for this month. And it's helping me go through these very fine, more detailed areas. And because of the fineness of the brush, I have watered the gouache down a little bit for over there. I wanted it to go around the bird just so that I didn't go over the bird entirely. I go over a little bit of the bird and cover too much of the black line and I actually use a baby wipe to just wipe it off and it clears it. You can see that it actually just lifts it off quite easily. So, um, And the nice thing about gouache is it dries. It's totally non-oily and matte so you can kind of write on top of it. I've never tried color pencil on top. I don't think I'd bother with that. Might be an interesting experiment to try, but I suspect it would chip the gouache up because it feels just, I don't know if brittle is maybe the word I would use, feels just a little bit brittle. I'm giving myself some more white because I want this to be even more white, um, less blue. It's amazing how many different shades you can make of one blue with just adding more and more white. So this is the snow along the bottom. And yeah, this is just carrying along. So please do let me know if you'd like me to show you me painting the trees in the gouache. I'd love to know if any of you have ever tried gouache in your coloring books at all, or if you've ever tried gouache from a Skillshare class, um, just painting a little scene or anything. I think I did a sunset a little while ago on my channel that I'd done on, on a Skillshare class, and I think I shared the link to the Skillshare class. So I can do another gouache painting, just a straight off painting, if you'd like that, let me know. Um, I also want to sh share my mini, mini um, haul and um, a lovely gift that I received from a very, very dear subscriber that I'll share in my next video. You can see the one area I used the grey. I then, I must admit, didn't like it. I think that grey is a bit just looks dirty. It doesn't look like snow. The blue kind of looks clean and is a reflection of the sky. So that works for me.
but the gray is not really working. So we'll see. So we're nearly, nearly, nearly finished and there's just the snow lying on top of the fence post. And then we're just about done. And so now I'm adding quite thick, just plain white with no blue at all. There's, well, I can't say no blue at all. There's just this teeniest smidgen left in there, but I'm using mostly just the plain white from that toothpaste squash out of gouache there. And I'm doing little streaks here and there with the white and I'm using this in a slightly thicker consistency as you can see. I wanted to cover the lines from that are on the coloring book page and it gives the whole thing quite a painterly look. I think. I'd love to know what you think. As I said before, I'm no expert and I'm not an artist. So, well, I can't say I'm not an artist. We're all artists in our own right, but I'm certainly not a professional artist or professionally trained in any way in art. So, so I'm just adding little bits of white for contrast and um, to add interest and dimension and highlights. And then we're coming to the end of this. I'm also going to go over the gray at the top of the page because I decided I don't really like it. Rather adding the white there. And I really, really would like to know whether you'd like me to do the trees or not. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that you have found it helpful. And um, I'd love to know if you have any intention of maybe trying it. Maybe you've got some gouache in your stash somewhere and you've, like me, just not quite known what to do with it. I first received gouache um, in one of the art um, subscription boxes that I used to get. And I basically at that stage just thought it was watercolor with a different name. I sub subsequently have realized it's a real, a very different creature to watercolor. I think for coloring books, this is by far preferable for me to watercolor because it doesn't need so much water. But regarding a favorite medium for painting with, I would choose my watercolor any day. I love my watercolour. Uh, maybe if I paint more with gouache, I'll start to feel differently. It would be interesting to know what you feel. I've been updating my Etsy shop at the moment and um, been quite busy there. So, yeah. I've, I'm kind of quite happy with the way this white at the bottom of the tree is looking. And I think I'm going to color those pine needles, those very fine needles with fine liners or sharp color pencils. The rest of the trees I'm going to do with gouache and then the little fence post. I might paint with gouache this time or I'm going to paint it with um, alcohol markers. I will see. And this brings our video to an end. And so I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you'd like more of this type of thing. Thank you for being here. Have a great week. Bye-bye now.